After having an incredible summer window, Hull City had readied themselves to compete for a playoff spot, and they currently see themselves sitting in 7th place as a result. However, they didn't let their ambitions run away from them and have already reinforced massively in the January market, completing some of the best pieces of business this month. With the arrival of Fabio Cavallo, Billy Sharp and Ivan Panda, and the prospect of a 4 signing Ryan Giles already on the cards. So how has manager Liam Rossini got his side from a 15th place finished last year to now be in serious contenders for a playoff spot. As I mentioned before, Hull had an absolutely sensational summer window and I really want to delve deeper into that and look at the players and the player profiles that they brought in and really their success that they're having isn't just down to the manager, it's down to the brilliant recruitment. Philogene Bidace arriving from Aston Villa for me was a massive statement signing. Although he is currently out due to injury, he's been absolutely brilliant. Just before picking up his injury, he was averaging just over 3 successful dribbles per 90, 7.3 touches in the opposition's penalty box per 90, and sat in the top 17% of wingers for chances created per 90. And alongside that, his actual final third output is and was ridiculous. From 14 games, he has 11 goal contributions. As we see by this frame here, a lot of Rossini's work is about finding his wide men in these isolated positions, whilst allowing the number 10 centre forward with an even deeper central midfielders to float around and offer support and create overloads. Which, to be fair, does work a lot better when Philogene is fit, as we've seen by a few dodgy results since he has picked up that injury back in December. But nonetheless, whether it be Fabio Cavallo, Liam Delap, or Philogene Bidais picking up the ball in these stretch wide areas, the scenarios that come as a result of it or some of the best that you see in an attacking sense in the championship. So I do really think these wide areas and having adequate players, not just in them wide areas, whether it be fullbacks or wingers, but also having central players that are of top tier for championship quality is absolutely essential. Looking at the average position of players against Sunderland, and we see both the deeper central midfielders extending into their more advanced positions. This means that they can create their overloads that I mentioned before, but they can also go in behind because of the fluid movement of whoever is up top. The main man for that obviously being Loney Liam Delap, who as suggested by his heat map, kind of moves pretty sporadically. He doesn't really have that structured movement of, you know, sit up top, hold up the ball. He does a little bit of everything. He's challenged with the task of find the ball in the half spaces, going beyond the last man, picking up the ball to his feet and holding it up if he can. And that's what makes this system and this attacking line so fluid because everyone... He's pretty much tasked with a little bit of everything. And partnering this sort of movement that we see from the centre forwards does then mean that then midfielders are allowed to be more advanced and obviously sometimes get beyond the striker if they can and again create these completely unique scenarios and actually allow them to again create isolated overloads whether it be in wide areas or just actually in the opposition's penalty box. Which brings me on to another piece of brilliant business from this past summer in Liverpool's Tyler Morton, who is obviously on loan at the Tigers. Morton is a tempo setter, with him having over 1,400 touches this season, and for me, that's absolutely massive for Hull, with them averaging the 6th highest possession percentage in the Championship this season. Morton can receive the ball in the first phase and evade the press consistently with ease, and this then obviously allows Hull to break through towards their attacking players, with Morton sitting in the top 11% of midfielders in Europe's other 40 leagues for passes attempted per game. And I think that is somewhat of a highlighted thing for me. Both midfielders have very, very good passing ranges in John Michael Serry and Tyler Morton. They can pick them passes out. It doesn't really matter what you're asking of them. Most of the time they can do it. And that's what made sense for the Scott Twine signing. Obviously, didn't perform how they wanted to, but it was still the right idea. He's someone who has been known for his creative spark and ability to create them obscure chances from his great passing range and that then allows the very very talented forward players that Liam Rossini has to get on the ball even more. However Morton specifically can also perform an attacking sense himself creating 1.7 chances per 90 and also being in the top 17% of championship midfielders for successful dribbles this season. Moving back further forward and also back to a point that I made a little bit earlier quite briefly I want to look really close at Liam Dalap and why he's 
gone from such poor loan spells in the championship and not performing anywhere near good enough to now being for me arguably one of Hull City's best players. In the past the lap has played practically as a lone striker with real emphasis on his goal scoring because of the poorer sides he was playing in but now under Rossinha he's getting so much more freedom and license to do what he does best which is actually get onto the ball. We looked at his heat map earlier but if we just pull it up again and he's not a huge presence in the 18 yard box but pops up consistently in the build-up and causes chaos with his movement. He's in the top 8% for touches by centre forwards in the championship, completes on average over 2 dribbles per 90 and has created 25 chances this season, which puts him in the top 5% of championship centre forwards. Now though, on to January and specifically one man. You can't talk about Hull without talking about this absolute unbelievable piece of business. Fabio Cavallo. Cavallo is a player with so much talent and quality and at this level he can turn a game on its head as we saw by his winner against Sunderland last Friday night. However, as much as that's brilliant and we can question if he's maybe too good for Hull as a side at the moment, there's no questioning as a player profile for me, he's pretty perfect. As we see by the early developments of his heat map this season, he's an attacking midfielder who can float in and out of so many different areas. He can receive the ball under pressure in deeper stages, and he can also link up play brilliantly in the latter stages as well. And now, I'm not going to be condescending here because I know that no one watching this video needs me to reiterate just how good Fabio was the last time he was in the championship. But if we do just zoom in on his stats, I didn't realise how badly he actually tore this division up. Cavallo registered 18 goal contributions from 33 starts, created 60 chances and sat in the top 3% of wingers for touches in the opposition's penalty box. Now really because he's not played too consistently since he's moved to Liverpool, you, you know he's not had the greatest of success but for me he's still developed massively as a player, that's the best reflection that we have on the quality that he brings statistically wise anyway but from watching over the past few years i think for me he's developed massively as a player as a whole and has obviously developed his technical ability to the point where he can now comfortably operate to a very 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 high standard in them central areas which is what he's obviously been brought in to do at Hull but it's not just new signings that Liam Rossinha is getting the most out of there's the old boys well I say that Jacob Greaves specifically that he's getting the most of as well and really putting in the spotlight and showing just how good of a coach he is and developing them massively. This isn't the first season that Jacob Greaves is performing pretty well. However, he's definitely stepped up his level quite considerably. He's a centre-half that is so much more than just a centre-half. He's someone that performed in possession with 1.35 progressive carries per 90 and 4.43 progressive passes also, which is obviously very important to the whole system, as shown by the fact he's had just shy of 2,500 touches already this season. But unlike a few of the modern-day centre-halves, Greaves is still very, very solid at the back. He's in the top 8% of championship centre-halves for tackles won and has also won 92 aerial duels as well, with a 69.2% win rate in the air. He truly is for me one of the best in the division in his position at this current moment and I do think he's a massive sort of showing of the development that's happening at Hull and that has been happening over the course of the last 18 or so months. He's pretty much the epitome of Hull City at the moment, a club certainly on the rise. And although I know they've been through a bit of a rough patch lately, and that's down to a few things, big injuries, players away on international break, all that sort of stuff, once they've got their players back, they're going to be another serious threat again. And they've managed to just keep their nose in it. They're still seventh place, they've stayed in the battle, and I absolutely see zero reason why they can't be in the playoffs come the end of the season. But if you have enjoyed today's video, then please do leave a like and subscribe. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.